What's going on YouTube? Pistol Pete here. Today I'm going to be doing a VR to uh, the Backyard Knife Dude and Captain Electrode. On uh, It's going to be a variation because I mean other, other uh, content creators have been doing this too. So I wanted to, to get in on it as far as... Uh, uh, it's good. Everyone's doing different variations of this, but the one I'm going to do today is uh, the biggest, the smallest, the most expensive, uh, the oldest, the cheapest, and the most unique is what I'm doing. I know uh, some others are doing a homemade or handmade knife. I haven't made a knife myself, so that's not going to be in the ballpark. And I guess there's other variations of that. Um, so uh, we'll get started. Let's get started because there's uh, quite a few of them here I want to do. So. My variation too, because I know a lot of them are just doing just the one knife, like uh, the oldest, the biggest, the most unique, but they're just doing one. I'm gonna do a little bit different, and mine's gonna be the uh, same same concept, but I'm gonna do the oldest folders folder style knife and the uh, uh, oldest um, fixed blade. So it's gonna be a, for, that's gonna be for all categories, uh, fixed blade and folded. Okay, so we're gonna go with that smallest, biggest, uh, most unique, blah, you know, etc. So let's get started. We're gonna start now with the cheapest. We'll start with the cheapest, okay? Now, when I say cheapest, the cheapest to me, also when I go to the most expensive, most expensive to me, uh, some of these knives are worth more, obviously, than some of these older ones, but it's not what I paid. So when I say cheapest, it's the cheapest for the, what I paid for it, not necessarily what you can get it for now, or uh, you know what, uh, it even, some, some it can even be cheaper than what I paid for now, or vice versa. So uh, this is from my personal experience. So let's start with the cheapest. I have to say, and when I go, when I say cheapest, I mean cheapest in price, not cheapest in quality. So this is going to be the best quality I, in my opinion, that I got for the cheapest price. So you all know for the budget, this is my favorite, favorite budget fixed blade. And yes, this is a fixed blade. It's a hidden. It's not, it's not a true full tang because it's, it's hidden, but it is a full tang. It is a hidden full tang. And you, you saw from one of my videos, the, the blade itself goes all the way down the spine, all the way down to the end here. So this is a, a uh, full tang knife. It's just a hidden full tang, but I love it. I love it. It is made out of more of a budget still. Um, if you wanna know all the specs on this, go watch the watch the video. I made videos on all these knives. I made individual videos. I'm not gonna go over size and dimensions and blade material and all that stuff, but um, I, mean, I might throw a few here and there, but mainly I'm just gonna give you the, the very basics and so we can get this going so it doesn't last forever. Okay, so this is the Rough Rider. The Rough Rider Black Mule Buoy is this one. Awesome, awesome fixed blade for budget. This was, I said, this was my cheap, cat best best quality for the cheapest price category is uh, this one. And this one was about 23 bucks, I wanna say. I think it's like 25, 26 now. But for 23 bucks, you're getting every penny worth of knife. Awesome, okay. Folding knife, best quality for the price. Uh, this one's gonna have to be the M-Tech. And this one here is the M-Tech MTA. 845 stainless steel spring assisted this was nine bucks at a gas station you can find them now i think on, on ebay for uh about uh, i think 15 to 16 dollars now but i got this for nine bucks at a gas actually my friend got it for nine bucks at a gas station um man this thing go watch the review on this this thing i even batoned with it i smashed through logs i cut through everything thing held up great still tight blade still tight spring assist still works great uh, for the money, this, you can't beat this. It makes an awesome truck knife. It has the seat belt cutter, has the window breaker. Awesome, awesome. Nine bucks, couldn't beat it. All right, let's go on to the oldest, oldest knives I own. So, this is a little different. So I did this one because I, I put, I, uh, they're both really, really old. But this one I just got recently, as you all know, is my last video I did. I gotta throw it in there again because I freaking absolutely love it. But this one here is the... Uh, uh, Blackjack Anaconda 2. Man, it's so beautiful. I freaking love this knife. Absolutely love it. Flawless mint condition. This was from the 19, mid to late 1980s. Uh, not one flaw on this damn knife. Edge, super sharp. Everything even to the sheath came out. Looks like brand new. Looks like someone, I said someone put this away for 30 years and then pulled it out and decided to sell it because it's, it's in mint condition, never used. It's gonna stay that way. It's gonna be like that for my kids. Maybe my kids' kids, hopefully. So this is the, the oldest fixed blade I got. That is uh, my favorite. One of my favorites, I should say. Second oldest. Now this one here is beat up, used, and abused. 
lasted through the test of times. This this one has sentimental value to me, um, and it's it's uh, it's one of my first knives I ever owned. This was actually my great grandpa's knife, down to my grandpa. My grandpa, my dad ended up with it somehow. I don't know if my grandpa gave it to him or he just you know in the box of stuff and the tools he had this, and my dad gave this to me when I was younger as one of the first knives I ever had. Um, you can tell there it's beat up, old school knife. This one here is an Imperial Prov, R-I, USA. So back in the day, this was like every man's utility knife. Let's see if I can get that in there. Uh, it's not picking it up, but every man's utility knife. It also has a little secondary, a uh, little rusted up, flat edge, almost like a flat, flathead screwdriver style with a Stella blade on it. Um, two little blades, slip joint knife. Awesome, awesome, old school. Like I said, great grandpa status. So definitely, definitely one I'm gonna keep forever. Um, this is awesome that we are, that all my whole family use this, my generations use this and and uh, pass it down and still keep going. So I'll, hopefully I'll give this to my son someday or my daughter. So uh, go from there, let's see here. Let's go to the most unique. We'll go to the most unique next. We'll start with the fixed blade. So for me, this was most unique because it just has every feature. I've shown this a few times too. This is a frost cutlery. Frost cutlery, and this is the um, Harpoon buoy, Stainless steel. You guys can see that there. And then uh, designed by uh, Jim Frost himself. So this is his design. Has the little eagle that looks like a chicken <laughs> on the back side here. Frost cutlery. Um, you know, a uh, fantasy knife, obviously, you know, but I'm pretty sure this will do damage, definitely for it's considered a fishing knife, but me, it's a fighting knife for sure. It has that little skull crusher type uh, pummel there. It has the brass knuckles, the little peaks on it there, little thorns, you'd say, I guess you could say. Came pretty damn sharp out of the box. Um, this part here is really sharp too. You know, I guess for cutting rope, cutting fish, I guess gutting, you know. Um, the, the handle on it is freaking beautiful. The frost style handles that they do. I love that. They layer it like that, that's awesome. So that's why I picked this is the most unique because it has almost every feature you could think of you could put on a knife. Nice little guard here. Um, this can be an older category too. This I bought this in the uh, probably mid nineties. So this one's fairly old too, but not as old as the other ones. That's why I didn't go into the, the oldest. Okay, let's go to the smallest. So let me show you. We'll start with the folding one this time. This I picked up, you can still get these now. This is a, it's a sturdy little knife, I recommend it. It uh, was like 12 bucks on Amazon. Um, freaking awesome, there's really no markings on it, you know, it's just a little, little uh, just says stainless steel. But for 12 bucks, man, like I, like I tell you with a lot of these budget ones, if you break it, go get another one. And I doubt you'll break it, it's pretty strong. I mean, this, this is strong, slip joint, but uh, strong little knife. Comes a little keychain. Oh, I took it off, but it comes a little keychain holder there. Um, nice little, I think these are probably just plastic handles, but they're still cool looking. Nice little strong slip joint. It ain't going nowhere. Came sharp out of the box. All right, now let's move on to the fixed blade. Smallest, this is smallest, smallest fixed blade I own. Bink! <laughs> uh, this is, uh, it's called a Fury. And I think it's a uh, Mula. I can't say that, Mula, I think the name is. Uh, uh, it comes in a set of three, and this is the smallest out of the three. Those little suckers kind of sharp, and uh, you know, a little point on it, little uh, little handle, little fixed blade here. <laughs> it was cool. So it comes in a set of three, but this is definitely the smallest fixed blade I own, definitely by far. <laughs> but it's a cool little addition, you know. I like that they put that in there with the other two knives. So let's move on here. All right, now let's go to the most expensive. Now this is the most expensive I bought. Like you saw with that, um, I'm pretty sure that one's probably really expensive too now, as far as the, um, oh, you know what? I'm skipping, I'm messing up here. Before we go on, let's, I just gotta go back here. Go back now to the most unique, right? For me, most unique. And again, this could be also uh, most expensive, but I didn't pay a lot for it, so it's most, not wasn't the most expensive to me, but I gotta throw this in here. I put this in here for most unique. I forgot, that was after, uh, I skipped ahead to the smallest ones, but I forgot to throw in this one for the most unique. Um, this one here is the M Tech. This one here is the SOCOM Elite Auto. And I just love the way it looked. I thought it was unique. I thought it was a unique looking blade. Um, it has, still has that glass breaker there. 
like that skeleton I see through type handle. Um, and awesome, awesome, strong deployment with that button lock switchblade style. I love it, absolutely love it. It's all, uh, this just screams quality. When you put this in your hand, you know, I know you paid a lot for these, you know, and again, like I said, I didn't pay that much for it. I got a, thank God, I got a super good uh, deal, thanks to Chris from Prepared Mind 101, but um, he gave me a really, really good deal on this, but these brand new go for about 300. And now if you can find them, they're like on eBay once in a while for like 600, five, 600 bucks. So, but again, I paid nowhere near that. Uh, awesome, awesome knife. And this had to go in the unique, just the whole, the way it kind of goes up and curves down a little bit, that modified Tonto style point, spring assist button lock. I mean, I just, everything about it was, looks futuristic and just cool as hell. So this has to go in the unique pile. Okay, now let's go back. Getting too excited here, going ahead and going all over the place. Now let's go to the most expensive knives. And this is the most expensive, this is the most expensive I paid. And it's kind of a tie for me with a lot of knives. So I just threw these in here because I love them and they're badass. They're my fun, fun blades. Um, but like I said before, most of my videos, I, I try not to spend most anything. Mo most I've paid for a knife is about 300, 350 bucks. I mean, that's for me justifiable. Like I said in my last videos, and y'all know, I said, once it gets over 350 and up, I'd rather buy a firearm. That's just me. Now, you know, I know people collect them. They're just 100% collectors. And I get it, totally get it. But for me, if I go over 350, I'll be getting uh, uh, another pistol, a Glock, a Sig. Uh, you know, if I'm getting into the thousand range, I'm getting you know a badass rifle, something like that. So for me, I don't go over 350. That's my max is for for knives, you know. But it has to be a knife I absolutely love to get to that price. And these two, uh, they're under they're under 350. They're about 300, around around 300 with shipping. But uh, absolutely my favorite. So I'm showing both of these because it's going to be a tie for most expensive. And uh, let me see here. So these two are a tie for most uh, most expensive. Both freaking awesome. Don't regret either one. These things are just so badass. This one here is the Puzon Predator Hunter. We can't even get the whole damn thing in the screen. <laughs> Back up there. Um, I love the G10 handles. That freaking looks like zebra print style. Freaking beautiful. Fin finish on, it's work tough. Manufactured by work tough. And man, they just, they knock it out of the park each time. Their fit and finish is awesome. They're everything, everything. They come razor, come freaking razor blades. Both of these come razor blades. And uh, that one was designed by Dave Kuzon. This one here was designed by uh, Hunter Cutchison. And this one here is badass too. Futuristic, man, like a futuristic meat cleaver. Just badass. Uh, absolutely love it. This one here, you know, and again, these are both around three something. Love them both. Like I said, worth every penny. Had to have them, had to have them. Just unique, different style blades. Both of them are just futuristic. Amazing, amazing knives. SK85 steel on those, high carbon. Okay, now the last category. All right, guys, thank you for bearing with me. Um, and uh, this is gonna be the last one here. This is the biggest I own. So we'll start with the, and you, when you say the biggest you own, right? You think those last two are the what, what most expensive would be the biggest I own. Those are, they're big, they're big knives. They're freaking huge, but this is the absolute biggest one I own. And uh, I, I love it too, it's badass. So here it goes, the biggest fixed blade. I bet you most of you that follow my channel know what it's gonna be. The KHHI Power Hammer Buoy. This thing is a beast. Beautiful. Look at that. Mirror polish, mirror finish. 16 inch long. 16 inch long blade. Sharp, came sharp. That power hammer at the back. Fixed blade, true, true full tame. You know, handmade, so there is little flaws in it, but man, it's it's awesome. And, and mind you, the you know how big the Predator Hunter is? Let me show you. <laughs> so that tells you the size, man. This is this is a huge freaking knife. This is retarded big, but this is just. And I, I made it. I mean, you know, like for me, I know, you know, you don't, you can't, you don't have to argue with me because I already know they're not fu that functional. I mean, this is a pretty damn functional knife for the size, and they still will do damage. But yeah, for every day, you know, you're not gonna be taking this up in the woods every day. You know, you're gonna take like the the BK9, the smaller versions. 
This you could probably do. This is more manageable. You probably could, but even this is still a little big for everyday use um, for a fixed blade. You know, and I don't mind carrying a big fixed blade, but these are crazy. But I just love big freaking knives. I, lo I always loved big boots. You know, since I was a kid, I was a fat with of just big monster choppers and, uh, you know, big monster knives. So both of these are just absolutely badass. But so this is, this right here is my biggest fixed blade I own. Just a beast. All right. Last one. Biggest folder I own. Biggest folder. Now, again, not practical, strictly just for fun, but I had to get it because it's freaking funny and it's awesome. And this thing weighs about three pounds, no, two and a half pounds. Look at this, wooden handles. And it's actually constructed really well. You know, surprisingly, it's actually constructed really, really well for a novelty. You know, this is like a display piece, right? Just put it on your mantle, but it, it's, it's heavy. I mean, it's heavy. And that clinging around is just that, that right there. Nothing loose, it's just that, uh, since it's a uh, liner lock, it's that liner inside hitting against the blade. But check this thing out. <laughs> Biggest folder I own. Uh, and like I said, you can just, you throw this at someone, you're knocking them out. This thing's heavy as hell. And surprisingly sharp, it's really sharp. Calls out 440 uh, steel. I mean, it's it'll shave hair. This thing shaves hair. I've done videos where I cut paper with it and done all that. But um, but yeah, it's just awesome, awesome. And I picked this up, uh, you know, the thing about this, you can't even find these that often. I was looking online, I can't find this anywhere online. Um, if you know a link that has all these styles, let me know, because I don't. I couldn't find any. I looked them just on the web, I looked on eBay, Amazon, um, all over. I can't, I can't, I don't know. All, I found, I have two of them about this size, like this. Uh, possibly the same manufacturer too, but I had two of them like this. Uh, this one, I got at a gun show about 15 years back, uh, a display gun show, and it was, I think I paid like about 15, 16 years ago, I paid about 70 bucks for it. And the other one I got, I paid about 80 bucks. And uh, and man, it's it's awesome, it's super thick, you know, has that liner lock that locks in pretty tight, you know, so I mean, it's not too bad. I mean, I've never used this. I wouldn't trust this swinging it down hard. Hell no, it's not a, it's not a triad lock or it's not a, it's not a cold steel. So I definitely would not be swinging on this. I mean, if you want to cut open envelopes or a cardboard box, go ahead and do it. Uh, you don't have to worry about it folding in your hands, but if you're swinging really hard, I wouldn't trust the liner lock. I wouldn't trust that. Um, but I mean, for what it is, it's it holds pretty tight, you know, and so I get, ah, it's too, too tight right now. Can't get it to flick open, but yeah, you can get it to flick open. Um, I think I tightened that down too. That's why I tightened the screw down on this, but let's try it reverse. There we go. There we go. So you can't get it to fling open. Um, I tightened the, the flat head down so to make it tighter so it doesn't wiggle at all, but awesome. Awesome. All right. That's it. Um, again, uh, the fun, this is a fun video. Um, I'm glad to do it. Uh, follow, like I said, follow uh, um, Backyard Knife Dude and Captain Electro to go check out those guys. They have pretty cool content. I like watching their, their channels. And uh, this is, like I said, this is a cool one. So, all right, guys, I hope you enjoyed. Please like and subscribe. And until next knife, gun, or whatever.